In this episode, we're spending our last night cruising Clacquot Sound before braving the rugged west coast of Vancouver Island. Our route takes us south along Tofino's famous Long Beach with plans to reach the Broken Group Islands in Barclay Sound. The waters we're navigating hold deep significance to the local First Nations, and up until now, we've explored islands few get to see. Next up is Effingham Island, where we've heard that there's an ancient Indigenous village site to discover. But little did we know just how overgrown the trail would be, how treacherous the driftwood could get, or how challenging it would be to actually find the site. Join us as we cruise on board Tangaroa from Victoria, British Columbia to Alaska, Siberia, Japan, and who knows where else. While cruising Clacquot Sound, we have been trying to catch our own food to eat. This time, we were successful. Little tiger prawns! Woohoo! The joys about having your own boat is we're kind of just making decisions here. It is really cruddy out. Um, I don't know what, I haven't actually seen the weather on the outside. What does it look like? It's not terrible, but I prefer to hit it on a flat day. Is it better tomorrow? Uh, it's supposed to be, yeah. So we're looking at the chart here, and a lot of these boats that go on the bear, they're going up here. So we're like, well, why don't we go up here and maybe stay in Warren Bay tonight? We've got the time. We don't pick up our friends in Yukulik for about four days or five nights. So we're going to meander. We're going to go up here, up through here, and see what we can see. And then maybe tomorrow we'll finish popping around this big island, down on Mears Island, and we'll get out. So that's the plan. We are not going to go on the outside today. We're just going to go and cruise a little bit more around Tofino. See what we can see because we are still on the hunt for bear. And we're, we have nowhere we have to be. So no. We're just going to enjoy it. And Maggie's like, oh, thank gosh. Maggie hates going on the outside. He hates when the boat is rocking. Sound actually has the most fish farms on the British Columbia coast. Lane's getting a workout because we are in a bunch of current. So without an autopilot, is steer, steer, steer. It's like a two to three hour 
Things were going great until the current kicked in, and then Blaine got a workout. You don't point, you just drive. It may not look like it, but with a four or five knot current coming right at us, Tangaroa was getting tossed around and was getting very difficult to steer. A little whirlpool is going past us. Four knots through here. Oh, look at that whirlpool. Luckily, with our new engines, Tangra had no issues bucking the current. Homestead out on the island here. And by the way, we were gonna go into Warren Bay, but I don't know what's going on, but the wind was wrapping right around and there's just waves crashing into there and it would not have been good. So we're gonna go try and find another anchorage. We're thinking maybe Ritchie Bay. This is the joys of being like up in the air. So we drove all the way into Warren Bay. We did a U-turn, says, yeah, no, we can't anchor here for the night. So now we're off to find another call bay. So Blaine says we're already hitting a four knot current? Yep. What's our speed over ground right now? 4.9. Oikes. Oh okay, yeah, let's go look at this current that we're going through. current through here. Hey Blaine, what causes current like this? Uh, tidal flow. Tidal flow. So what's happening right now? Uh, right now we are just coming up to uh, high tide. So I guess when it's an incoming tide, current flow is this direction. And uh, once that flips over and starts dropping again, this will switch direction and start flowing the other way. That's amazing. A lot of and this one goes down. up to four knots. So we're on the top of Mears Island. Yeah. We're doing 3.9 knots now. Oh my gosh. So we're definitely going against the tide. So if you're in a smaller boat where you can only do like five knots with the motor, this is not good. No, you barely be moving out here. But we're at 1500 RPM and on flat water without the tide, what speed are we doing? Uh, right around nine knots. So yeah, we've lost. Nine to three and a half, a little over four knots. Holy cow. What do you mean? It's over five. Yeah. 5.6 knots. Pretty serious current. We definitely do not time our currents. If the, if the narrows was more narrow, I guess we would time it, but we have faith in this and our new engine, so we're just going for it. Welcome to Ritchie Bay, a bay full of crab pots and otters, both vying for the same thing. I was going to say prey, but it's not prey. What is that? Food same source. food source, crabs. And I had to pull out the foul weather gear because it's pretty yucky out. We're looking at depth. 34 feet. 34. 150 feet out? Yeah. Okay. So what I do is I set the brake so it's just coming out nicely. Because if it comes out too fast, the chain piles on top of one another. The chain piles on top of itself and then it just becomes a mess. So you kind of let it out first so the anchor hits the bottom and then you slowly let it out as it comes backwards. 
Okay, we've got 150 feet out. I'm gonna lock it off there. After I lock off the anchor chain, Blaine actually puts the engines in reverse and sets the anchor. Stop! <laughs> Holy crap, that was a good hold. That just started pulling it right off of the wildcat. I think we're stuck. Whew. Okay, snubber. can see that the snubber has taken over from the chain and again that puts less pressure on the windlass okay let's lock it off we are here and I'm getting out of this weather this is horrible in case you haven't seen our videos before that's our fire pit Yuck. Richie Bay was just a hideout for us until there was a weather window to get down to Barclay Sound I think I need my pajamas back on. We did not get off the boat, but we definitely enjoyed what was around Yucky. us. All that black out there, that is all sea otters. That's a whole bunch of sea otters. Like probably a couple of dozen. It's no wonder there is no crab left anywhere around here. Good rainy morning from Ritchie Bay. It is so raining. Like, it's been raining all night. Oh, and by the way, that's all otters over there. Is that crazy? Look at them all. Want to see a big jellyfish? Look. That's like one of the biggest moon jellies I've ever seen. to stop raining and guess what <laughs> it did okay tofino bound we got 75 feet of chain left the anchor's up and we're going to go see the otters let's see how close we can get to them not very close because we don't want to scare them but let's just go see also i've got the good camera which is you so we can zoom in okay let's go see otters Look at them all! Isn't that crazy? So many little otters. They just kind of hold hands and float around. Maggie, no. Well, the ones closest to us are like, what's happening? After leaving the otters, we headed straight for Tofino to make a quick stop. I don't think I have ever seen cows either eating seaweed or drinking from the ocean or... I don't know what they're doing. So we love Tofino, but every restaurant is like vegan, vegetarian, healthy, and really we just want sugary cinnamon roll crap. Yes. Like give us the good gooey I mean, cinnamon roll stuff. If I'm going for a cinnamon roll, I'm obviously not caring about if it's healthy <laughs> for me. So, so Blaine went to this hippie bakery, let's call it. <laughs> and I got a cinnamon roll that was made with like wheat bread, honey, <laughs> and sunflower seeds or something. And I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like I, if I wanted to eat dog I would have just gone and gotten dog because it was terrible uh, and I don't know why they gotta ruin a perfectly good cinnamon roll to be healthy because you're not buying a cinnamon roll to be healthy but I love Tofino but like seriously almost every restaurant's like that <laughs> except for the one we went to the other day good old battered fish and chips but the bakeries 
vegan, vegetarian, healthy, whole, eh, no thank you. Nope. nope. We like our sugar and our refined stuff. Yes. Okay, stuff we're back to Tangaroa. It's time to haul anchor and head towards Barkley Sound. After a quick stop in Tofino, it was time to head south to Barkley Inlet, down the wild west coast of Vancouver Island, where the waves are coming straight from Japan and there is no protection. For those of you who know Tofino, let me explain where we are. So, Mackenzie Beach was just right there, okay? This is Chesterman. So North Chesterman, South Chesterman. And remember that little walk to the island? It's right there. And then we're just coming up to Cox Bay. So this is what it all looks like from the ocean. Things you have to watch out here in the ocean are massive logs. Like we are a logging industry and lots of these log booms use log lose logs, which is how the Beachcombers actually came about, which was one of my favorite shows growing up. But yeah. But check it out. There's a massive log right there. There's a really big one right there. So we're kind of threading the needle between them. Like you do not want to hit those on the boat. I don't think they'd harm us. We've hit a big log like that before, but can you imagine if you're flying along and you smoke that? <laughs> There's a lot of boats around here that get damaged by hitting logs. And look at this one. Okay, well we're just coming into Barkley Sound and we're going to go to Effingham Island for the night. So you park in there. Um, I think we may stay a couple nights because there's some really cool things around Effingham that we want to see. First of all, again, the name Effingham is just so funny. <laughs> but there is an old village site that we're going to go check out and some sea caves. So it's the perfect place to hang for a couple nights and explore. And here we go again, cruising into Effingham Bay, but this time we're going to stay for a bit and explore. Not often it takes us twice to anchor, but it just didn't hook the first time, so we had to do it again. But now it's time for a beer, a cider, and some hammocks. Thank you. I just sit and chill for a little bit. I think we picked the right idea. It's time to get in the hammocks and chill. But look at my view. You can pretend you're in a hammock. I would like to say, Blaine, that these hammocks were the best 50th birthday present ever. Weren't these they? hammock poles. Weren't they though? And I just want to give kudos to the person who came up with putting hammock poles in these. Oh wait, that was me. Almost as good as the person who made it happen. I'm gonna go take the dinghy around Effingham Island. But it's cruddy out, right Blaine? It's not beautifully sunny, no? No. So we was looking, or I was looking at all trails. We was, you see that? Yeah, that was, I was straight like, ooh, Louisiana straight right Louisiana. Yep. Anyways, I was looking at all trails and there's a trail on Effingham Island. So we're gonna go find this trail and go for a wee little hike. 
We had also heard that this trail, marked by old floats, was hard to find, but it led to the remains of an ancient First Nations village. We were up to the challenge, but first, we had to check out this really cool boat that was anchored next to us. We were oh. thinking Nordhaven. No, it doesn't quite have the Nordhaven look. What do you guys think it is? Anybody, anybody, anybody? You've got about one minute to figure it out before we're there. Watch somebody pop their head out the window. Okay. We'll just wave. Oh look, they got a Weber barbecue, same as we do. Yeah. Okay, it's something 52. And turn away. It's Royal a Royal Passage, Passage Maker from Park Isle Marine. Nice. We have never heard of a Royal Passage Maker. I have not. It's kind of cool. We may have to Google Moogly that tonight. Yeah, lots of freeboard on the front. Tons. Tons Neat boat. So, we just boat. spoke with the people off the boat over there that we just went and checked it out. And they went about two thirds through the trail and they saw fresh wolf tracks. tracks. So, we've got the dog on the leash. They said it was a pretty dense trail. You know, we're tough. Let's see how far we can go. But look how it's marked with rope and more rope this is the trail <laughs> i have no clue blaine or was it right Are you in there sure we didn't have to go right in there that does not look like a trail can't even find the beginning of the trail we're useless <laughs> we might have should have kayaked in i think that's the beginning of the trail uh, then we're not walking that. That's ridiculous. That's, yeah. That's not a trail. We're gonna try this again. That was not the trail. I think that is though, so. Oh, that's a good idea. Rock's going nowhere. There we go. Oh. You did forget your stick. You want to go back? Uh, yeah, I'll take this stick. I'll go back I stick. got her. Go get your stick. That's my wolf beating stick. Your wolf beating stick. Oh, Megs. There's a better stick here. A better wolf beating stick. Well, for the record, I don't intend to beat any wolves. These are purely for protection. <laughs> Against what? Wolf. <laughs> heck do we get ourselves into sometimes? Oh, this is fun. This is certainly uh, a trail. Woohoo! We're already doing better than the last high up spot. Oh, I think I should go this way. Maggie, this way. Over here. Come here. It's like a trail of buoys. Okay, go Blaine. Back on it. Look for wolf tracks. I want to see some. Netting. Oh, it's like a treasure hunt. And you thought it was just blue. It's a treasure hunt. This trail's not bad so far. Better than that first trail I started. <gasps> Another buoy. Not trail you started. What are we gonna do with the dog here? Just pass her under and all. <laughs> Maggie, you gotta wait. Sorry, you are not in the lead. There are wolves. Come on. Woohoo! Tripping. Okay. Another buoy! I don't know who carried all these buoys in here.
Whoa, look at that tree, Blaine. Look up. That one. Isn't that cool? What type of poop? Black. Wolf poop. Maggie's like, I'm out of there. Oh, look at that. Huh? That is a cool tree. Tree's amazing. We get to go under this. Cut on another brewery. Oh, boy. No, it's yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Okay, yeah, boy. Another buoy. Okay, between your legs. I felt her. Oh, this is a cool little path here. Yeah. It's on an old log. Oh, that's probably really slippery. She's muddy. I know, but that's okay. Buoy. It's like a, I don't know if that's a buoy. What is that? Or a name? If it was meant to be a buoy. It's kind of cool though. Let's have anything on the other side. Why would they do that? Nope. It's got some wood on the other side. <laughs> oh my, look at that. Is that pretty? It's gorgeous. Look what's hanging up in the tree. What's hanging up in the tree? Up there. Look forward a bit. And look up. Now look up. Stop. Up to your left. Down a bit. Up a bit. <laughs> wow. Oh, there it is. Wow. It's a piece of metal hanging in a tree. <laughs> wow, Blaine. That is not a boy. That is not a boy. That's a shoey. A shoey. But it keeps us on. Oh, it keeps us on. Look at that I know. Looks like it's opening up a bit. We got some netting. That's an old trap. Prime trap, yeah. maybe? It's pretty much rotted away on all the ends of the. There's a big buoy up there. Yeah, there is. I like this trail. Yeah. Big banana slugs. How you doing? There's a buoy there. <laughs> and soon we were out of the muddy forest and it opened up into a beautiful beach. Now it was time to find the remains of the old village site. Oh, super wow, for once Blaine falls and it's not Janice. Weird. Usually it's me landing on my arse. We made it. Not entirely sure where we go from here. Well, what's over there? Something blue. Yeah. Let's go look. Yeah, can we go down the beach or? We On the beach. Okay. And it's a really big log. Effingham Island has a lot of history. For thousands of years, the Chanoth people lived here, right along these beaches. They built villages with longhouses, fished, and made their lives from the ocean. We are trying to find one of those old village sites, looking for any sign of where the Nichanoth people lived. It's amazing to think how many generations called this place home, surrounded by the same coastline and forests we're seeing today. So supposedly as we go over here, there's an old village site. So oh. we're just gonna walk along the beach a little bit and see what we can find. I don't know about an old village site, but there's a big park set up down here. Oh, can you go underneath the, over there? That's kind of what I was thinking. I think under this might be easier.
What's that? Is there a dead person in there? Is there a person in there? Really? Yeah, it's like they had a campfire or something in here. Okay. They could have cleaned up their crap. Where'd you look under? I'm wondering if this used to be the old village site, like up in here, it would make sense. But it's just, there's nothing left. Like, I can look up under the clearings. I don't know enough though to see evidence of a midden or anything like that for a First Nations village site. It's definitely open up in here. Lots of styrofoam. Looking at comments on all trails, not many people had located the site. Looking at Google Maps, this is our guess as to where the site once was. But we couldn't see any evidence. Usually there is a midden, which is a concentration of shell, bone, botanical remains, ash and charcoal. Evidence of past Aboriginal hunting, gathering and food processing activities within a particular area. We don't know enough to identify one here. Come in, Blaine. I was just looking around. No. Okay, sorry. Just in case we missed it, we kept going down the beach. Good, that one moves, Blaine. Gotta find the driftwood that doesn't move. Pardon? <laughs> oh, that one's cool. Look at that one. Unfortunately, we didn't find a village site, but of course, we found plastic. Hey, Blaine, you found a barrel. What? How far down do you want to go? Let's just peek around the corner. Past the barrel. What if there's a dead body in it? It doesn't feel like it. It does not feel like there's a dead body in the barrel. I think it'd be heavier. Wouldn't that be weird? Woohoo! That one moves. This is pretty. Another barrel. Is there a body in that barrel? You should check. I have a really hard time fitting it through the tiny hole in the top. They could have taken the lid off. Is there a village site up there? Let's go in. Oh, I mean, someone's pee spot again. Well, what do you figure? Well, I do have concerns about the tinder. Then we should meander back. Probably, probably meander back. Let's go. All right. with you, Lane, oh, you I'm laughing at. That was a valiant effort, man. Whatever you fell. I did. <laughs> I wasn't making an effort for anything. I was just walking. <laughs> Alright, baby. Let's go. That could be a wolf print. That is not a Maggie print. 
Not a Maggie print. Big dog print. It's a big tree. Big tree. Have a little. Yeah. Big tree. Ready, big tree. What are you doing, Robin? Come on. Go. I think she smells something. Mm -hmm. Oh, because look. Oh, we were at the. I think that's wolf poop. What did they do? Not human poop, not dog poop. And as we came out of the path, we realized that yes, we had issues with the dinghy. Swim, Blaine, swim. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. I the car it is now. I'll go get it. I don't mind getting my feet wet. Do you want me to go? Um, well, your shoes are a little bit, mine are brand new. Like this is literally the first hike I've been on with them. The tide came up while so, we were here. I have okay. a feeling that might happen. I'm going. Okay. It's okay, Princess. Okay. You stay. You okay. stay and keep your feet dry. Okay, good. Thank you. Oh, well. Oh, nice. Some of this is deep. What's that? Some of this is deep. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I don't even think my rubber boots would have worked. Always an adventure. Okay, we may leave the wolf stick. Blaine, do you want me to keep the wolf stick? Can I leave it for somebody else? Okay. I guess I could drive. Go get your ass in here. Husbands. Okay, back to the boat. We just finished our hike, and that means we get to chill out. So honey, cheers. And it was a really good hike, except for all the evidence of wolves and having Maggie with us. I was a little bit worried. I don't know if Blaine was. Actually, he was carrying a big stick, just in case he had to beat off the wolves. Walks off me carry a big stick. Walk softly, carry a big stick. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, if you want to see the videos early, I've been editing all day today, getting Sundays out, but if you want to see our videos early and ad-free, you should check out our Patreon. Also, every Wednesday we put out the Wheelhouse Weekly, where we actually give real-time updates of what's happening. So check it out. There's a link down below. And um, cheers. cheers. We're also running a contest. If you join Patreon now, you could win the Great Canadian Christmas Care Package. The draw will be in December, and you know what? You can actually join Patreon for free. So check it out, and we'll see you on the inside.